from inside Memorial Stadium. This is the Huskers Radio Network podcast. All Huskers, all the time. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Welcome back, everybody, into the Husker Radio Network podcast, episode two. This is Jessica Cootie, and we've got a hot topic to talk, talk about today, a fascinating topic. NIL, if you follow college athletics, you've heard about the new legislation that's being passed. It's going to allow student-athletes to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. And while there's still a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknown about what this is going to look like moving forward, what is certain is that Nebraska has been at the forefront of this deal, kind of embracing, preparing student-athletes for, for what's to come. And I am by no means an expert, but luckily for Husker fans, there is an expert that works inside Memorial Stadium. This is Garrett Glassy joining us here today, the senior deputy AD, and he has been one of the ones leading the charge on this deal. So thanks for spending some time. I know there's a lot of interest and questions about what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I would hardly call myself an expert by any stretch <laughs> because there's a lot of unknowns, but we've been looking at this for, you know, close to 18, 19 months, and we want to be prepared when this, uh, when NIL monetization starts. Yeah, so July 1st is a big day, but let's go back to the beginning because this is something that's been being talked about in the works for a couple years now. And when you first started, you kind of jumped all in on this deal. What was kind sure. of your interest level? What did you kind of, what was your thought process about where this might go? Back in the beginning. Sure. I mean, even prior to my time at Nebraska, I was athletic director at a Division One school in Chicago. And, you know, everyone's interested in student athletes' rights. And I think as you start talking about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense that a, that a general student on campus can monetize their name, image, and likeness, but the student athletes cannot. So if, if a band major that is an elite flutist or whatever, they're flautist, whatever they're called, if they're able to monetize and get paid for their performances, then why aren't uh, uh, student athletes able to monetize their name, image, and likeness? So it's been something I've been following closely for well over two years, but in the last probably eight, nine months. It's really been a hot topic. Um, it's been talked about, obviously, at the federal level. Um, obviously, our state uh, passed the bill as well. And with California passing the first law, it, it really brought things to full speed ahead. And that's when we really started trying to put programming in place. So there's a lot of schools, a lot of universities that are not um, embracing this, maybe not uh, moving forward quite like Nebraska. So why was this something that you, this administration, wanted to kind of embrace and say, hey, look, this is coming. What can we do to kind of be on the forefront of this? A couple of reasons. Number one is that it's really in our DNA to do things right and do things first around here. If you look at, you know, Husker Power was created here, first strength and conditioning in college athletics, first nutrition program was here in Nebraska, Hus Husker Vision was the first of its kind in college athletics, and it goes on and on and on. So really, we want to be innovative, we want to be bold here, and we want to do what's best for our student athletes. Uh, number two is that we feel like we're in a unique position here at Nebraska to really really take advantage of it. Um, being the premier brand in the state, not having professional franchises to compete with, our fan base goes from each corner of the state. It's Husker Red everywhere. Um, we've consistently been a top five brand when it comes to uh, multimedia rights, when it comes to um, fan viewership on television. And so if you combine all those elements together, we feel like our student athletes are going to have an incredible opportunity to be able to monetize their name, image, and likeness. So July 1st is the big date that's kind of uh, everybody's looking at. What is going to come from July 1st? What are we going to learn? What are we going to know from that moment on? Well, my understanding is the NCAA um, Leadership Council is going to get together on June 22nd. So we may have some answers on what the NCAA is going to put in place at that point. Um, but July 1st is just the first um, first date available when I believe six states have bills that will go into place that students can monetize their name, image, and likeness. And I believe it's Alabama, Georgia, uh, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And so when those states start, then, you know, it, the other 50 or not 50, excuse me, other 44 states mm -hmm. are going to be at a disadvantage. Right. And, you know, the way our bill is set up here at Nebraska is that we're able to opt in at any time. And so we're, we're carefully considering when we want to start this. And um, um, at that point, you know, the, the student athletes in those states, if there isn't an NCAA legislation passed, they're going to be able to go out and, you know, uh, be influencers on social media and get paid for it. They're going to be able to start their own businesses and advertise um, with their name on those businesses. They're going to be able to do summer camps to uh, 
Um, you know, if you're a football, volleyball, swimmer, whatever, you can host your own camps. And so um, we want to make sure that we are, are able, are ahead of that, and we give our student athletes opportunities to be able to monetize. Absolutely. And that's something that, you know, it's not even coming July 1st. It's already been in the works here for quite some time. I mean, I hadn't even started and they had signed me up to speak to a group of student athletes. I mean, this has been something that's been going on, this education and the compliance department is awesome, uh, kind of making sure that they're, uh, you know, educating on the rules and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk through some of the, you know, this initiative that was posted on social media, but mm -hmm. just kind of more in depth about what is in place to help these student athletes prepare. Yeah, we have a, a three prong approach. We're calling it hashtag NAL Braska or Nil Braska. And it really involves three components. One would be our partnership with Open Doors. I mean we have great partners. It's three blocks from from mm -hmm. our campus right here. And they're really helping our student athletes, educating them and assessing their social media accounts and how to post, when to post. Um, and, and we feel like that's going to be a huge component of it. The second piece is we're going to have mandatory life skills programming for each of our student athletes called the Husker Advantage program. And so Keith Zimmer and his staff are just world renowned for having one of the best uh, life skills programming in the country. And so they're going to have personal strengths assessment. They're going to have brand building. They're going to learn how to communicate and network. And then there's going to be a financial literacy piece um, that are that's going to be mandatory for every single one of our 650 student athletes through life skills. And then the final piece we're really excited about is that we have such great alignment with our campus is that we're partnering with the School of Business and the Director of Entrepreneurship Program, Joe Petsick, has been our liaison through campus. And they're going to offer programming to our students and student athletes um, that's really going to help them uh, treat them as a startup per se. Um, they're going to learn how to create their own business. They're going to learn how to build something greater. Because we always say that here, when you choose a college, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40 mm -hmm. or a lifetime year, uh, lifetime time decision and we want to make sure that these student athletes have these skills whether they monetize their name image and likeness or not that they can last them a lifetime that's going to be useful for them down the road and so um, the partnership with campus is going to include the school law that maybe help our student athletes create their own LLC or uh, the mass communication and journalism school has that their in-house advertising agency so how do they help our student athletes monetize their name image and likeness and so uh, it's still a little bit of work in progress but it's just exciting that we have um, that alignment with campus that they're here to help our student athletes. And it's really a win-win for both sides because the students in the school of law and the students in the communication school and school students in the business school are going to have real life experience, um, that they're going to have on their resumes when they leave here working with our student athletes and our student athletes are going to have the assistance that they need. That's so awesome. How did that like come into play? Did you guys just have meetings with, you know, the, the people over there and how did it kind of all become so cohesive, I guess. You know, really a lot by um, by chance. Uh, I was at an alumni association event in Scottsdale. Joe was there. I got connected with Joe. Learned that Joe, even though he's employed by the school of business, isn't really uh, faculty. He he had it on his own startup, and so he thinks like a businessman. And 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 we started talking about name, image, and likeness, and how we feel this could be a great advantage for the University of Nebraska. And as talks continued, he's a go getter. He's so passionate. He uh, he spoke on the big red blitz yesterday at a couple of our spot uh, stops and and he really has a, a just a complete um, understanding on how this program can work and has been an incredible resource so really organically but it's turned into something pretty special let's talk a little bit about open doors you mentioned right in you know our back door but uh, our backyard but how do um like if people don't know what that is Maybe explain that a little bit more and, and how the partnership is kind of worked out between Open Doors and Nebraska. Yeah, I mean, we've been partners with Open Doors for a long time before mm -hmm. name, image, image, and likeness was even around. I mean, they've been incredible help to our social media team, our digital team here. Um, but when it, how it pertains to name, image, and likeness, they really are the leaders. You know, they have partnerships with, I believe, the NFL Players Association, with the MLB Players Association, the NBA Players Association. So they've been in the social media game for a long time. I mean, partnering with guys like Trevor Bauer, who's an incredible baseball player, obviously won the Cy Young, but has helped him increase his followers by something crazy like almost 2,000%. And so um, they're just the professionals at it, and we're very fortunate that they're in our backyard. But, I mean, th these student-athletes, I mean, we were the first team or first school to sign 
a deal with Open Doors when it pertains to training our student athletes on building their brand and social media. And the reason we felt strongly about that is that we didn't know it was going to come, that NAL was going to come to fruition. But at the end of the day, this is something these student athletes need to learn. I mean, the old school dynamic in college athletics is the compliance staff would talk to the student athletes and say, this is what you sh- can't do on social media. This is when you shouldn't post. And this is what will get you in trouble. Well, it's turned. It's, it's, a, it's a complete um, 180 now because now we're coaching and teaching and educating these student athletes when to post how to post Mm -hmm. what should you post on how do you gain not it's not just about uh, impressions it's about engagement how do you create an an engagement and I think these are all going to be important if these student athletes are going to be able to monetize their name image and likeness yeah because you got to think there's going to be some people that are coming after them that uh, maybe don't have their best interest so you know the education part is important that they're not signing up for something that might not be good for them you know later on down the road that's exactly right I mean we don't know what kind of agents that are going to, you know, there's companies popping up every day with name, image, and likeness. So we wanted to make sure that we could partner with people that we trust. And Mm -hmm. obviously we trust Open Doors. We obviously trust our partners on campus. And so uh, it's going to be an ever, ever changing landscape. I mean, it's, we have to be nimble. It changes by the minute. It's been what I've been concentrating on for the last probably three, four months exclusively. So um, yeah, adapt and adjust. We're going to have to be ready. What's been the reaction from student athletes so far leading up to this and what's kind of already been in place? They're really excited. I mean, they know that we have the best fans in the country. They know that our fans, uh, you know, the Huskers are number one in their heart. And so we have student athletes from wrestling, from volleyball, football, men's and women's basketball. They're all they're all ready to go. And, and our and our corporate sponsors and our fans, they're they're ready to um start utilizing our student athletes in that matter. You know, I think we have to be careful from a department. We can't get involved in those deals and we're not going to get involved in those deals, but we're going to be able to educate them, point them in the right direction and, and, and help them along through this process. You hit on a point there about um, that. It's, it's not just football. You talked about some of the other sports mm-hmm. if, and I've been in college athletics for 10 years now. And if I'm a female student athlete, in high school right now, I'm coming here, right? Like, cause they're the support, the, um, you know, the fans, the fan base excitement around women's sports is really unmatched here. It is not just about football. There are some women's athletes that are going to be able to really capitalize on this NIL deal. Yeah. If you look at Nebraska, the story around our fans that we've sold out every football game since 1962, mm-hmm. pretty impressive. But what people don't talk about is how many years in a row have we sold out volleyball games right. and the great fan support at softball games a great fan support at our women gymnastics meets. So yeah, our fan base, uh, they follow all of our Husker sports, all of our student athletes. And yeah, yeah, I mean, our volleyball team in particular, based on their on-court success and the the passion of the fan, they're going to, they're going to do quite well uh, on par or maybe even better than our football or men's basketball. What do you kind of feel like this might do for recruiting in the future and especially in the immediate future? Well, I, I think it, I think it's going to be important, um, particularly in sports where, um, for example, the G League is is they're paying more money to get these five star kids to participate in the G League. So if uh, if we're able to get a you know a four or five star recruit that's being enticed by the G League, you know maybe they may make that same money here at the University of Nebraska. Right. We don't know, but. Um, it could happen. And then at the same time, you know, a five-star recruit, you know, we got a young man that's a tight end from Council Bluffs, Iowa, that he could probably, you know, if this had started, you know, by the time he had signed, he probably would have been monetizing and had autograph signings, things like that. So I think uh, I think it's going to have an incredible impact because, you know, a lot of these kids come from backgrounds where uh, they have a hard time supporting themselves. And if they're able to support themselves and support their family, you know, we want to be part of that solution. What about, I asked you about the student athletes kind of reaction. What about the coaches? It seems like some of the ones that I've talked about have really been kind of on on board, on brand with what you guys have done, kind of embracing this with open arms. Because, of course, their first, you know, um, interest is for the student athletes. And they seem to be supportive in in what's going to benefit them. Exactly. I think they all they know it's going to be a little bit of distraction and that's what you do to win is, is limit distractions. But they also know this is in the best interest of our student athletes. And 
let's face it, they're all competitors. They're all in this business to win championships, and they're all in this business to graduate student athletes and prepare those student athletes for the next stage in their life. So NIL fits all those categories. And when it comes to recruiting and our coaching staffs, they've they've embraced it with open arms. They're all talking about it on their uh, recruiting visits or recruiting phone calls or Zoom calls. So, you know, we're, we're all in. And, you know, and at the end of the day, um, it's a good thing that everyone in Nebraska is because if, if you aren't all in, you're probably going to be a little bit of a dinosaur and become extinct because this is this is where it's headed and we need to be prepared for it. You talked about how it's not every state that um, has accepted this legislation. How did it kind of work with Nebraska? Was that something that, you know, you guys were involved in? How did that kind of come to be where Nebraska was one of the first states to pass it? Sure. Yeah, we didn't really have any involvement, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, Senator Hunt introduced it. Um, They asked us to testify. I was able to testify on behalf of the not just athletics, but the university. And we were we were neutral because we wanted a federal legislation. You know, we didn't want other states, other schools to have a leg up. We think it should be a player, a fair playing field. And, you know, that, you know, July 1st is fast approaching. I mean, what is it today? June 17th. Mm -hmm. Um, So in two weeks, one way or another, name, image, and likeness is starting at least in some states. So um, that was our stance. We still stand by it. We hope there is a federal um, resolution to this, but there isn't at this point. And so we have to be ready and do what's best for our student athletes. One of the questions I've been getting, and I don't know the answer to is, so say there's a student athlete that some business wants to, you know, utilize, advertise with, maybe have an autograph signing. How is that going to work? They have to go through a a party in between. How does that, what does the logistics of that look like? Yeah, we can't have any involvement Mm -hmm. in that. I know Open Doors has a mechanism mechanism called Open Doors Deals that if if the student athletes on their own want to sign up for it, um, they've partnered with a lot of companies that they're going to be able to sign deals through them. But yeah, these student athletes, that part of it, they're going to, they're on their own. So, you know, whether it's a third party marketing agent is the way some states have it set up or through um, sources like Open Doors, that that's how those ideas are going to be done. We can't do anything as an athletic department to assist with that. Which is where that education and those you know those programs that you were talking about earlier really comes into play for these guys. That that's correct. I mean, we are working on a policy right now that's going to educate not just our student athletes but our entire staff, mm-hmm. uh, our fan base, our donors, our boosters. Everyone needs to understand the rules on this because we're going to do it better than everyone else, but we, we want to make sure that we do it legally as well. And so the policy right now is about a 35 page document. And so to make sure everyone reads it, we got to condense that. But between our compliance staff here, Jamie Vaughn and his crew, and you know, when it comes to the marks that they can use, you know, working with Brandon Meyer and his crew, like we're working on this day and night to make sure that we can educate every everyone by the time we start name, image, and likeness. Okay. Let's talk about fans, what they can do uh, from here on out to help in this whole deal. The big thing is, you know, we've talked a lot about, hey, if you own a business, you know, you can now, you know, invite Adrian Martinez or Lexi Sun to sign autographs at your event. Um, but really, the big thing as a as a fan, you guys are already doing it. You're buying season tickets. Um, you're you're supporting them on social media. But the big thing is, and I just said social media, follow our young men and women on social media. Um, there's different formulas out there, but based on the total followers and the engagement that you have, really makes an impact on. Uh, what kind of revenue these student athletes are going to receive if they retweet something or post an advertisement on Instagram? So our fan base, keep showing up, being keep being yourselves, being Husker Nation. But the additional thing you can do, follow these young men and women, our student athletes on social media. And again, that doesn't just help these current student athletes. These ones that are looking at, you know, maybe coming here, they're noticing what the following count and all that, the social media platforms of the student athletes that are already here, right? That That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, whether it's recruits or student athletes are here, follow them all. Now, now follow the recruiting roles when it comes and don't uh-huh. be engaging with recruits, but just follow them. You know, uh, you know, we always say uh, a combined, a unified Husker Nation is something to be reckoned with. And, you know, if we get everyone, one of our, every one of our passionate, passionate fan base to follow of all our student athletes, that's going to make an incredible impact. And, and quite honestly, Nick Burkhardt and his team, social media, they have a, um, a social media directory where you can go on huskers.com and follow. And every single one of our teams shows their Instagram profile, shows their Facebook profile, shows what their Twitter handle is. So go, go to huskers.com, find that out, and follow, follow your favorite student athletes, uh, all your student athletes uh, today. Well, Garrett, we appreciate your time, and I know it's, again, going to be an uh, evolving type situation that you guys are going to be 
again, staying on the forefront of, but uh, we'll probably have to have you on to talk about this again at some point. But I do think it was important just to continue to, you know, educate and, you know, get the get the word out there to fans to understand how this thing is kind of all playing out. For sure. Thank you. I mean, it, it's it's something we're very passionate about, it's something that we've mentioned before is going to make a, a huge difference. So uh, excited to get this thing going. And yes, would love to come back on again. And uh, thanks for listening and stay tuned for more right here on the Husker Radio Network podcast.